All right, so 1990 Fox Body Mustang had the e-brake cable snap. So trying to put in a new e-brake cable. So I've already got pretty far into this, but I don't think there's too many videos of this on YouTube. So even though I'm halfway in, I'm gonna try to describe how what went into this up to this point, and uh, try filming the rest too. So basically, you've got that splitter piece and the cable snapped by the splitter. So this was just kind of hanging under the car. And you got your two cables that go back to the drums. Okay, so, and each cable's got a little bracket on here. I wanna say this was maybe 3 8 something like that. So, this cable was actually run through the bulkhead in here so kind of like right by the by the muffler it was going through a hole up in here so basically what I did to get these out because these are like little um, almost like push clips so this one's still on here but I just broke them off like you can see that snapped off and like that one snapped off so it just took like a flathead screwdriver and I stuck it under there and just snapped them which is kind of difficult to do because it's kind of buried up in here so and especially on this passenger side you gotta be careful because you know you got some lines in the way you don't want to rupture so <clears throat> you know take off the, the mounting brackets here snap these and then this should just pull out you know they should both pull to the towards the doors to pull them out and there's let's see if I can get this on video see up in there kind of like a crescent moon shape that's where the there's one on each side that the two cables go through on the driver and passenger side so once you once you snap these tabs and pull that the rest of the length of this cable is going to go through those little uh, crescent moon shape cable holders. So the other thing too is you got to take apart the console. Let me grab a light. So got the console pulled out of here. You know, pull the boot off the shifter if you got a five speed. And then uh, the other thing I had to do, had to kind of cut a notch in here to get to that, the rear mounting bolt for the e brake. So the new cable, the piece that comes up into the car, see this opening, there's actually a grommet on it, and you have to feed that from inside of the car. So I'm going to show you the, uh, the e brake handle out of the car with that new cable running there. Alright so when you pull the center console out too you know don't forget to you got some wiring involved here just disconnect that disconnect for the mirror control I think we got the cigarette lighter so unplug that stuff get this out of there the other thing too on the side of the e-brake for the indicator light there was a there was a wire that plugs in here and then the ground was on this uh, on this bolt all right so this handle is what I would call loaded which means it's got spring tension on it you see the cotter pin in there so to get it to this point this hole would have been back here you know, you're going to need two people. So with the hole back here, I fed this on there. And, you know, you got to press the button, get this flat. So then have one person with the cable on there, pull tension on that cable. And then the other person has to pin it with this cotter pin. There's a hole in there. So now it's, it's set, it's tensioned. So that'll give you the slack in the cable you need when you put this back together. So, and this is going to go in through the car, like this will 
get in the car I'm gonna sneak this through and then this will fit because trying to go from the bottom of the car this is actually almost feels like there's a metal ring in there you're not really gonna collapse this and feed it from the bottom of the car this has to go in from the passenger compartment down to the bottom and it'll fit I mean this looks like it it wouldn't fit but it will it'll get through there so as long as you take this out and then even you know taking out the mounting bolts you know make sure you spray them with penetrant lubricant and just I had to work them back and forth like I'd loosen it I used a long handle 3 8 drive ratchet just got it loosened and when it started getting really tight loosening it you know get in there with the penetrant spray it tighten it back up you know go back the other way tighten it let it soak a little bit and then start working it again and I mean I had to go back and forth back and forth back and forth it took a while because it's obviously the car is pretty old everything's crusty under there you gotta let that penetrant break all that rust loose so now with this cable you know it's just gonna go right in there and I'll take this in the car sneak this through the hole run it in there and remount this all right so back inside the car that's where we gotta sneak this through So the other thing you gotta remember too, we got wiring to reconnect on here for that e-brake light. So we'll have to put the ground back on. There we go. So this will go back on here. And then uh, gotta screw this back on there. Alright, so I actually had to notch the plastic out to get this 3 8 drive. This is definitely what you're going to need. 3 8 drive, long handle, and clearancing that out so it'll fit in there properly. Alright, so this is the side of the e-brake that's going to the drum. Now basically both sides of this cable are pretty identical like I was talking earlier about under the car. So basically you're going to do the same thing with just breaking these tabs to pull this thing out of here. So you just get the screwdriver under there. Bend them back. So the cable's got three of those. So once you pop, break them all back, it'll just the cable is gonna slide out of here. All right, so all I had to do was break two of them, and then the last one I could actually push in with the screwdriver. This is obviously a lot easier because under the car, it's like buried up in there, so it's a lot more difficult to gain access to it but in this case I just broke the two off used the screwdriver to push the last clip in and it just slid right through all right so here I am on the passenger side of the Mustang got uh, everything swapped out here pretty much got brand new everything new wheel cylinder and all that uh, that's the parking brake just kind of laying there for the moment really want to get the still have to do the driver side so uh, I'm gonna try filming that I don't know how that's gonna turn out it's gonna be really difficult to do that but I figured out I'm gonna read through like how you're supposed to put this together and I'm gonna try to show you even though it's already assembled and then uh, like I said I'm gonna try actually filming the other side but I don't know how that's gonna turn out so I guess just bear with me like 
I didn't really find anything on YouTube covering the rear brakes on the Mustang, so I figured, you know, try to put this out there. Maybe it'll help somebody out. All right, so I'm going to read through it first. Like, first thing you have to do when you go to put everything back together is to lubricate all the contact points, which you can't see them because it's all put back together right now. But uh, the next step after that is you're going to have to insert the top of the parking brake lever into the notch at the top of the secondary brake shoe. And the secondary brake shoe is the one with the longer lining. So on this side, you know, this is the passenger side. So the left side of this is the secondary shoe. See how those, it's a little bit longer than the shoe area on this side. So that one's a little shorter. So you're going to place the shoe against the backing plate and install the hold down pin and spring. It should be this right here. That's the pin and the spring. Then the next thing you're going to do is install the parking brake strut. Make sure the slot and the strut seats and the notches and the brake shoe and the parking brake lever, which is that strut is back here, it's spanning between the two shoes. See that little strut back there? So you have to get that strut put in there. You're going to place the primary shoe against the backing plate and install the hold down pin and spring, which would be you're going to install this shoe, with the shorter lining, and you're going to put this pin and spring in. Then you have to hook the automatic adjuster spring into the hole at the bottom of the primary brake shoe going to be the spring down here, the red one. You're going to hook it into that shoe. Then you're going to place the shoe guide plate over the anchor pin, which is You know, you've got these two springs, you got the white and the green spring. Well, behind there, see how there's this cable that's what they're talking about. You gotta put that in there. Then you have to install the self adjuster cable over the anchor pin. And you're going to use the uh, brake spring insulation tool to hook the primary shoe return spring over the anchor pin. So let's get into these springs. So, I mean, I kind of did a little backwards because I got the, I put the green one on first instead of the white one. So now you're going to install the secondary shoe return spring through the cable guide and into the hole in the shoe. Hook the other end onto the anchor pin. So like on this side too that you've got that little guide plate that this cable's got to run on so you got to make sure you got that on there. So then after that, you have to route the cable around the cable guide, which is what I was just talking about, this guide up here. And push up on the adjuster. You have to check the cable to ensure that it rests inside the cable guide groove and not behind it, which means like there's a groove in, it in this guide. So make sure that that cable is riding in that guide and not kind of falling behind it. And at that point in time too, you 
you're gonna make that connection with this cable coming into this the adjuster it's kind of hard to see it's it's back there okay see how it's got that little hook there So basically the last thing you're gonna do then is you gotta get this adjuster between the bottom of these two shoes. This is really like, I mean I did it myself, I really don't know how I did it. But it's really kind of a two person job. So what I ended up doing is I snapped a pair of vice grips on here, a pair of vice grips on here, and I spread them out to get this adjuster up in there. So what I did was, I put this side in first, and I kind of tucked this around the back side of the shoe, spread the shoes out, and you gotta sneak this in there, make sure it fits into the shoe correctly. So after that, what I really want to do is, uh. Like I said, I gotta do the other side. Then I gotta get the uh, the e-brake cables all hooked up. Put the drums back on here. You know, make sure clean them off and all that. I might even uh, kind of scuff over the shoes a little bit. I got a little little bit of grease on one of them, so it's kind of try to knock that off of there. And uh, so, like I said, when I get both sides done, put the drums on and uh, get the cables hooked up and just kind of operate the e-brake a couple times. I mean technically what I could do is just throw a shoe on and yank on that thing. It's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna kinda center everything in there and uh, from there you'll be able to start adjusting it. So see what happens. Like I said I'm gonna try to uh, film the other side but I don't know how well that's gonna go. See what happens. Alright so first thing I'm gonna do on this side is get a container under this thing blast it with brake clean. Alright, so the first thing I want to do on this side is get the spring off the adjuster. I just took a flat plate screwdriver and I'm holding up the adjusting the parking brake lever and I have to screw this adjuster in to collapse these shoes so I'm just going to use some uh, some robo grips Alright, so I could actually use my fingers for most of it. Towards the end, I had to use the robo grips again, but notice how there's no threads left, so it's pretty much fully collapsed. Next thing I have to do is get the primary and secondary springs off the top here, this anchor plate.
right, so I got the primary and secondary spring off and the uh, guide cable. And then what I'll do with this stuff is just put in a little plastic bag just so uh, you don't lose it. It doesn't end up getting stuck in your tire later on. It's always a good idea to capture it in a bag. So after that, next thing you got to do is get these, uh, these springs off. Pretty easy, you know. I guess you can do it without a special T-tool, but special T-tool makes it a little bit easier. And by the way, I should have mentioned earlier, definitely want to have your safety glasses on because all these springs are pretty insanely dangerous. Pull the pin out from the back. Same thing, pins on the back side. All right, so the other thing you wanna do is get this cable guide off of here. Once again, this goes in the bag because you need this thing, you don't wanna lose it. Same thing with those other mounting springs, throw them in that bag. All right, so now I should be able to spread these shoes and get that uh, parking brake link out of there. link the spring Make sure you save this link now the link in that guide plate I'm putting in another bag I got a bag with all the new stuff in there so you can see that I got the plate in there so I'm just gonna put this in that other bag and then this spring would go in the junk bag all right so the rest of this just kind of peel off of here now Parking brake lever. Get that off of there. So once again, you gotta keep track of these parts. And the adjuster fell in here. Luckily enough. So I got the adjuster. So the adjuster's got to be cleaned up, you know, probably uh, go over this stuff, cleaned off a little bit. And then, like all these mounting points where the shoe's going to come in contact, you know, I'm probably going to run over them with a wire brush to begin with. Just use this. And uh, I'll finish them off with a Dremel tool with a little wire brush on it. And then uh, got to pop this cable off just like I did on the other side. All right, so just like I did on the other side, this cable's got like these little pins that are holding it. You know, they're, they're like a bush clip that spreads out and holds it. So you have to smush them to get them through, but 
it's kind of difficult the way it's mounted so what I've been doing is just snapping them off there I mean I got a new cable so it doesn't matter so you know for good leverage I got this long flat blade screwdriver just put it up in there that tab off. Alright, so there was one pin left, so I just got the screwdriver behind the back side and, uh, you know, got some leverage on it so that it will push out. So now this cable's done. Alright, so. For me, I'm doing the, the wheel cylinders, wheel kit, whatever you want to call it. Um, I already broke everything loose. That was kind of the first thing I did. I got the wheels off and got this thing up in the air. And I sprayed down the brake lines and the mounting bolts with uh, some of that Marvel penetrant lubricant. And I'll probably actually go over what I did to break all that stuff loose. Um, but for now, like it's already loose. I already actually have all the brake lines off the back. I'm actually putting a stainless steel brake line uh, that goes to the splitter on the rear axle. So I basically just disconnected all the lines coming from the hard line where it goes into the splitter. Took that banjo bolt off and uh, basically just disconnected the brake lines from both the, the wheel cylinders and just took it all off as an assembly. So none of that stuff's in the way. So you just got two mounting bolts. Uh, for mine it's 7 16 I mean I don't know depending on your wheel kit maybe you got a different size maybe it's the same size who knows but I uh, just got there's just two bolts on the back here you know I'll get the box on down there and uh, loosen them up and this will pop right out all right so I got one of the bolts out and then what I'll do is just put on the new wheel kit just so you don't lose it just put it in there a couple threads got the last bolt out Gonna screw it in here so don't lose it. And then this should pretty much pop out of here. There you go. Now, <clears throat> the new one I got, the bleeders are actually quite a bit longer. So what I had to do to install the one on the other side was actually take out the bleeder on the new one, get it in there, start mounting it, and then I had to screw the bleeder in after the fact. So depending on how long your bleeders are, which quite honestly, these are kind of hard to get to. So I'm actually happy that the new ones have a bit longer of a bleeder on there. It's gonna work out pretty good trying to bleed these down. All right, so I got everything cleaned up. Contact points are all greased. Got the new cable pushed in there. So you want to start by putting this secondary shoe on. You got to put the e-brake lever on. Just back here. And then put the shoe on with the spring. So the next thing you gotta do is take this link spring and just lay it in here. So after that you gotta put the primary shoe on with the spring. Alright, so 
axle. You got the uh, automatic adjuster spring. It's going to go into the shoe. It's going to span across, and this adjuster is going to hook in on this side. I have to put the self adjuster cable over this anchor pin. You have to hook the primary uh, return spring over this anchor pin. So you have the secondary return spring. You got to put it through the cable guide. Got to put the cable guide on the shoe, put the spring in, and then attach it. All right, next thing I do is route the cable. Make sure it goes around, it's seated properly. Then you'll have to push up on this adjuster so you can hook this. All right, so the last step is to get this adjuster in. So basically what I did, I have done this by myself, but it's probably more of a two person job. Put some vice grips on there. Get something to pry with over here. Put the slide the adjuster back into the uh, the shoe, and then you're gonna have to spread them. Have one person spread from that side, the other person pushing that way, spread them out, and then you can hook that. You can hook the front edge in there when you get it spread out far enough. So gotta clean up the new drums, get whatever kind of grease or whatever kind of packaging muck they put on there. So first I'm gonna wipe them off with this uh, wax and grease remover. Gonna use a couple towels, use one towel to wipe and another to dry. And uh, after that, just kind of spray it off with the brake clean. Remember whenever you're Handling a wax and grease remover. Want to have gloves on.
All right, so here's the cable on the passenger side. Got the bracket put in here. That's a 10 millimeter. And then you have to fish it through the frame here. Okay, and be careful when you're putting the cable through. Oh, let's see if I can get this. Like, make sure the cable actually goes through the hole in the frame here because there's actually an opening above it so the cable could actually completely miss this hole. So make sure you get the cable through the hole and just push it through so the pins pop out. And then just route it. If I can get a view of it. Got it hooked up to the handle. Alright, so on the back side, the uh, rear brake line getting a stainless steel braided brake line. And uh, this is the bracket that was on the car. So basically, it just kind of ground it down with the Dremel tool. So there's like a big hunk of metal holding it onto the bracket. And then I'm just gonna kind of take a knife and then tap on it with this hammer to break it loose. So here's the bracket. I had to kind of hog it out. Just use a Dremel tool, cutter, stone. Alright, so that's the braided splitter. Got the lines back on. Just gotta bleed it all out. <laughs> 